Hi, my name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food on both YouTube and Facebook. How are you today? Well, I do have my Bulletproof coffee with me. I will try my best not to slurp. It's hard not to froth. I'm telling you, if you had one, you'd understand. Anyway, I know, I know, my mother raised me better. Sort of. Anyway, have you ever given yourself another chance and not just kind of said the words but didn't really mean it? You know, like, I'm taking another chance. I'm, I'm rejoining Weight Watchers. I'm going to do it this time. And it's just said in that flat way because you're just so disgusted with yourself for where you're at at that moment. And so thinking that if you dive back in, like you'll catch it, like you'll catch the motivation. And sometimes we do, right? Sometimes going back into, um, if you go to the face-to-face -face meetings, you know, you will get a, a renewed zeal for the program and, and say, wow, you know, I, I kind of wonder how I, ever, how I ever got away from this. You know, it was so perfect for me. It really worked. I lost weight, things like that. And, um, and so giving yourself a second chance is not, it's not necessarily a bad thing if you really, really, really deeply think and just don't, you know, blithely say, you know, I'm just giving myself a second chance at this or a third or a fifth or a hundredth, you know, really, really plugging in. Um, I know that with certain things that I probably just have that, um, you know, that kind of like uh, automatic pilot with certain things that if I really stopped and looked at it, I'd go, huh? Well, why? Why do you keep doing that? Or why? You know, it's that, it's that um, little uh, fable about the person walking down the street and um, every time they walk down the street, they fall in this darn hole. <laughs> and so um, the next time they go down, there's, you know, um, there's those, um, those orangey things that people put around things when they're doing construction to caution. And, um, and so, you know, she sees them, but she still walks through them and she falls into the hole. The next time she comes down the street, there's the yellow police tape, do not walk past here. You know, police take notice or whatever it is it says on that. And, you know, she breaks through and she still goes and she falls through the <laughs> falls into the hole. I mean, like, not that any of us have ever done this with sugar, right? And anyway, the story goes on. You can make it as long as you want, but eventually she just takes another street. Oh, cones, that's what the word was. Yeah, so eventually she just takes another street. And so how is that? Do you ever take a different tact toward your um, food plan and... Um, with the tracking, with really, really looking at it, and not just automatic piloting your way through your food journey, your food recovery. Sometimes it's a recovery. For me it was, after all the damage I did for 60-something years to my body with sugar, um, yeah, a lot of, lot of grains and, and garbage, but mostly sugar. You know, all those years where it's like, I wasn't paying attention, it's like, oh, it's just the sugar. I don't care. You know, and it's like, what do you care about? What do you care about, sister? Come on. Are you going to get plugged in or what? And so I gave myself another chance. And that was 19 months ago. No, um, 18 and a half months ago, because it's almost May. And I joined in June 2014. And it was the most serious time that I did it. And um, I tell the story of myself sitting in this meeting. And this woman had her arms laced like this. And they, you can't see it, but they were laced, you know, like right here over the midriff. And um, this lovely, lovely lady was my, I can't do this one more minute. I didn't want to... Um, have my midriff grow any bigger. I couldn't. And um, it was that, I guess I was giving myself, maybe it was a first chance. I don't know. I mean, I joined Overeaters in my 20s. 
and a lot of the ways of it stuck and stayed, and I certainly cleaned up my food as I went along, but there were still some pretty horrific ingredients that I was eating that I wasn't paying attention to, and I think that's what I like to stress here on this site. In my video are, are the ingredients um, that just should have that poison symbol on them, and um, I just don't want to. I just don't want to have those anymore. Um, yesterday, I was watching Dr. Oz, and he had Mark Shackner on the Dorito Effect Man, and he was doing diet ice cream and froyo, and um, and then a couple of nutrition nutritionists would pipe in with their thoughts, and. Um, the, the consensus of all was to have the real thing in a smaller amount, have that full fat. All the chemicals, he found 50 ingredients in one fro-yo. And he went to this cultured, I think it was called cultured something in New York, and where they make the fro-yo from scratch. And the woman was just shaking her head because it's made with um, yogurt, and berries, or, you know, other things probably too, but this one that she was making was yogurt, berries, and sugar. And she couldn't understand, you know, the, the froyo, um, maybe uh, that, isn't there a, fro a frozen yogurt store at a lot of malls? And he said, you know, you're never seeing dairy trucks deliver all the yogurt to make the froyo there. Instead, it comes in these packages of this dry, dry yogurt, like dry milk, dried milk. And they just put it into the container and mix it with water and then add all of those artificial flavorings to it. And so one of the nutritionists was saying that at least at these um, Froyo bars where, you know, they have all the, uh, like the buffet you can get um, at least some nuts and maybe some fresh fruit. So even if you are having that, but some of them had 1% yogurt in them, 1%, and they're called Froyo. And um, he said that the government just isn't, um, it's not one of those required by law sort of things. And so be very, very careful if you think you're getting a diet, you know, a, a less calorie item, you might not be. And, and the satisfaction part of your brain won't say, oh, you know, it's not full fat yogurt. It's not full fat ice cream. And so um, for somebody like me, it's the sugar in these items because the sugar, yeah, it would light up my brain. It wouldn't satisfy my brain. It would light up my brain for more. So um, I would have to be very careful of those things anyway. And then he talked about making his own, that he and his family make their own. And um, I guess I'm just happy with my fat bomb, and if I want more, I'll make my coconut custard with Zyla um, and um, enjoy it that way. And um, that's probably coming up. I've got some creme brulee in the oven right now for Greg and for his desserts for the next few days. And um, tonight is Fathead Pizza. Fathead Pizza. Mm-hmm. So... And I'm going to make a little version of a Greek salad for lunch with some arugula, feta cheese, chopped up cucumbers, chopped up tomatoes, lots of cracked pepper, oil, oh yeah, and a chopped up avocado. How divine does that sound? Um, so anyway, that will be my lunch and then the fathead pizza for dinner. And usually it's a fat bomb night, but because I'm having the fat head pizza, I'm not having my fat bomb. Oh, the sacrifices I'm making, I'm telling you. And so, anyway, back to giving yourself another chance. Be gentle with yourself. I, I, I did a video a couple of days ago, and um, Dr. Oz is kind of on board with that 28-day challenge if you watched it. And it's no, I know you're going to be surprised, no artificial ingredients, no sodas, no sugars, and the grains that um, he was touting yesterday are the ancient grains and different ways of making them. And I guess if I was going to go back to having any grain, it would be steel-cut oats, and I would make them, chill them, 
reheat them, chill them, and then have it. Um, as like, uh, I wouldn't have it at noon, at breakfast time though, because I like my high protein, high fat, either my yogurt with peanut butter or my cottage cheese. And today I'm having a half a cup of organic cottage cheese for my breakfast. And that kind of lasts me for a couple of hours and then I have, I'll have the Greek salad. So in giving yourself another chance, you really need to take a step back and say, okay, what have I been operating as my standard, not the standard American diet, which I hope that um, you are certainly moving away from, but the standard fare in your house, F-A-R-E, <laughs> not the circus type of fare of food, and um, the standard fare that, that you've been having day after day after day, and nothing's changing with your body, and you're getting a little frustrated, and maybe even you're having a bite off of somebody else's plate of a this or a that because it's starting to make, make eyes at you. Oh, remember that saying? He's making eyes at me. Well, if that piece of cake is making eyes at you, then you need to do something in your food plan that is going to satisfy whatever that craving is. Is that craving for the frosting? Is that craving for the sugar? Is that craving for a grain? Then you need to find something, like for me it would be the fathead pizza, where um, almond meal is the uh, grain replacement and it makes a mighty nifty pizza and satisfies. And I haven't had one, it's either been three or four months. And so that's, that's rare and appropriate for me with my fathead pizza. And so that's what I'm up to and I hope that um, you're enjoying yourselves and um, if you need a second chance you're taking it and you're looking at it seriously and thinking not just losing weight for the summer but health. Health because the stuff that you're doing today is going to show up 10, 15, 20 years later as a chronic disease if, if, it's not, if it's not good for you, if it's not healthy for you, if it's not safe for your organs and your insides. So pay attention um, don't fall asleep at the sound of my voice. <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> Have a wonderful day. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food. Bye-bye for now.